Let's see. Okay. Veronica seemed disgusted by how her mother and grandmother spoke about Chan being a good match for Malia based on his money. The book said that Veronica's fiance's mother acted the same way. Do you think she is questioning how things are done in their society? Um, hmm. I don't think she, I don't know. I don't, I don't think she's, um, I don't think she's questioning how things are done, um, in their system. I'm not sure. I'm gonna let y'all answer that and then I'll come back to it. That was a long one. That was a two parter. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll let y'all answer that one. Um, well, I was thinking that at her age, she should know how things are done in her society. But I'm thinking maybe she hasn't heard her mom talk about it, you know, and maybe she got it uh, kind of uh, when she spent more time with her fiance's mother, she kind of seen them talking different at home than they would talk in public. So she, you know how you can get like a kind of behind the scenes when you know somebody personally. And then when you see them at church, they on their best behavior. And then you see them at home, you're like, what, uh, uh, wait a minute, you, you be cussing and you be listening to Jay-Z? Like what? You know, so, you know, you, you get the behind the scenes kind of thing, you know? And so she, that may have been hidden from her to a certain extent, you know? And then now she's like, wait a minute this is how y'all really act but like this is how you, this is what y'all really be talking about so i think it's a little bit of that you know i agree i think uh veronica is in a place where she's she's very much a part of this lifestyle and you know she's doing exactly what you know the family would want her to do but i do think that she's starting to be like hmm some of the stuff it's not okay. Like, you know, I think she was embarrassed also by Brandon hearing, you know, her mother and her grandmother talk about like the whole finance, the financial aspect of how well off Chan was and how we can look past the fact that, you know, he's not black. Um, and we can zone in on the other things, like how we can be financially blessed as a family, because if he got it, Malia got it, and then we have it, you know? So I think she was kind of thinking like, Sometimes when you hear people say stuff out of the comfort of, the, of your home, out in public, where other people can hear, you're like, you really think like this? Like, I don't know. I think she was, something in her was kind of like just clicking like, hmm, I don't know about that. You know, like, I, I understand like where we're at in our society and, and our family and like what we're doing. But at the same time, sometimes when you hear it out loud, like sometimes you have an understanding of things that, do, that don't necessarily have to be stated. You know, what's understood doesn't always have to be stated. But sometimes when it's stated, when it's already understood, it blows your mind. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You know, because I've had people do that, even in my own family, where there were things that you kind of already just knew, but nobody acknowledged it. And when it was acknowledged, that you're like, oh, snap. <laughs> like, we really on that, like, for real, for real. Maybe it was like a little bit of naiveness. Like, there have been times where I have been like, oh, no, because that wasn't the intent. Or I, I don't think it was quite that bad. And then when somebody says something, I'm like, oh, it was as bad as I thought it was. I was not, now I can't dumb it down. Now I can't play like I didn't understand. Now I know for a fact it was as bad as I thought it was. And now it's even worse because you tried to explain it. Alicia, what did you want to say on that? Um. Okay. So, but I don't think she's questioning how things are done in society because she's going along with it. Um, I just think for a moment she was like embarrassed that Brandon, her, you know, the, the, not the T, but, you know, heard them in their con. And he was even quite, he's like, oh, my God, are these people really like this? Like, mm -hmm. oh, my word. Sort of like with your dad. You know, we had mm -hmm. um, white friends that would come around and he was all respectable and stuff. But, you know, if we called each other certain names or said certain things around um, these outsiders. Caucasians, yeah, the others. Um he would like go off on us. But then when it was just us around the house, right. I mean, we were called those names <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, sometimes with a little title in front of it, you crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. little mm -hmm. like, Oh, mm -hmm. okay. so that word is yeah. banned. 
you know, around certain right. people or these names are banned or even, you know, talking about, you know, well, really it was one or two words in a phrase that we couldn't say when certain people were around. Was around just, yeah. 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 We didn't care. Shoot. He would call us by this, <laughs> by them names. So yeah, she knows how society is working and she, um, she's, you know, going along with it. Um, marrying Brandon or whatever, but I don't think I don't know if she's questioning how things are done. She's just kind of like embarrassed, like, oh God, Brandon heard this mess. My family's doing the most. Almost mm -hmm. made it like they were struggling. Like, yeah, we need you yeah. because I mean, we need this money. I mean, we ain't really got it like that, you know. <laughs> That's what it. Hey, that was yeah. what it appeared. To me. So. um yeah, that, that's just all. That's my little two cents on that question. And I think you said something that was really important. You said, you know, it came off like some beggars. It came off like some people who are greedy, who really didn't have it the way that they wanted to put it out there. But that's a lot of people's today. Like they live with this whole like keeping up with the Joneses or portraying a certain level when they're really not there. You know, and I feel like you have a lot of that in Rose City where it's like, no, we're supposed to look like we have it all together. We're supposed to look like nobody struggles. And there are people who really do have it together, but there are those who maybe it's taken everything in them to keep that lifestyle going because they don't want to look like they don't have it. Because if they look like they don't have it, then they get bumped out of this exclusive group of people. So you got to keep up like that look. So I feel like they have some money, but it definitely ain't. It's definitely not what some of the other families have. They have some money, but it's definitely not what some of the other families that they have to compete with. And that was some of the uh, issue. I guess it will be. Um, OK, I, sometimes I, I go back and I think like what was last posted and where we are now. So that one is whatever. It'll, it'll be the next um, episode that will get posted where where they're at the baby shower and it's kind of not baby shower, but the bridal shower. And we kind of get a, a glimpse into like the world of these other women and the things that they are enduring in their own like mental view of the world. And and like I said, some families really have it and others are like, we got it. We cool. And other people are like, we don't really have it all the way, but we're okay. And we're going to keep faking it until we can completely make it. And there was things came up about um, Sandy. You know, some people felt like Sandy and her family don't have it the way that some people have it. So then why has Sandy been able to infiltrate and do the things that she's been able to do? Why is she queen bee? Why is her daughters marrying some of the most, you know, um, eligible bachelors? Like why, why, why? Like people want to know, like we got more money than you, but why? Sandy has figured out like a secret way to go around, not maybe having as much money as other people. She's figured out some stuff on a mental level and she's using it against people to play it so that she can rise the ranks and she has even without the millions upon millions. And so now having Chan around, I was like, okay, I'm already, I've already there socially, but baby, if I can get them, if I can get them zeros and the numbers in my account, it's golden. It's golden. I think you could be a part of something and not like it. You can be a part of something and be like, mm. I, I'm going to say think something that me and Kyrie have always talked about that we didn't like when we were very heavily in the church. <clears throat> And I mean, I think me and you've had this conversation too, Alicia. We always hated the fact that like you're a pastor or you're a leader in the organization. Why, why are you up here and everybody else is down here? Why is it that when we have a church function, why is everybody running around pandering to the, to the bishop and to the pastor and not making your plate? Last time I checked, your legs weren't broke. Get your own plate. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I just, it was always this thing. Oh, I'm going to get pastor. And then everybody couldn't get the plate because everybody wasn't worthy. You remember them days where it was like, Mm -mm. everybody can't be touching people's places. Everybody ain't got a right spirit on. That's why people be getting sick. People aren't getting sick because somebody had a spirit on them. Okay. Um, I, I never understood that. Why can't you get up and make your own play? What's well, the respect factor? You know what I respect is when I show up to something and I see the leaders in the house leading by example. And they're the ones who are showing up like Jesus showed up. Jesus was out there washing people's dirty feet. He was the one out there doing all types of, you know, grimy work. But this, this was Jesus though, right? Like we would think about like Jesus himself should have been somewhere sitting on top of a, a golden throne with his arms out. Like you beggars bring me my fish and my loaves of bread. Like, no, Jesus was like, uh -huh. let, let me uh, pray over this and let me talk to my dad. And so we can multiply this. Like he made things happen for the people. And, um, Sometimes, you know, when you're in something, you can question it. And I just remember, I was like, I don't care what 
I become in church or what my title will be. I always want to be that person that y'all know. Sister Q is not above cleaning the church. She ain't, ab she ain't above, you know, working in the nursery. She's not above this or, you know, or, or beneath that or whatever you want to say. Like, I, I can do all of it. You know, uh, this is beneath me. I, I'm, I'm up here and, and the daycare ministry, it's not my ministry because I'm better than that. I was always like, if you're going to be a real leader, you have to lead by example. There shouldn't be a one job in the church if you need to do it, whether it's if you be an usher, a singer, um, somebody in the finances department, whatever. There shouldn't be one thing in the church that you can't do. And if you're like, that's beneath me. Yeah, you, you have the wrong spirit on you. So you can be a part of something and question it because I always question things and I didn't like it. And I was like, that doesn't make me feel comfortable. Get your own plate. Oh, and the pastor needs somebody to bring him some, some water. He can only have Fuji and it has to have wine. Get your own stuff and bring it out on stage. Why are we catering to you like you're some kind of king or queen or something like, oh, pull his car around because it's, it's raining. So we got people pulling your car around so that you don't get wet because they don't want you to get a cold. But we got 70 and 80 year old women who are on walkers who the other women in the church need to help them get to their vehicles while it's the downpour. Shouldn't we be pulling their cars around? Let me shut up. So I'm just gonna say, I think you could be a part of something and not like it and question certain aspects of it. And I think that really goes to you starting to wake up. When you start to question things, even if you still go along with the majority of it, I do think that it starts to say, hmm, some, some type of wheels are turning that you're starting to be like, that's not okay. And that's when you know that stuff is about to get real. My next question is, Frank admitted he believed he might be too late in his quest to save Malia from Champ. Do you think there is hope that Frank can turn the situation around? Absolutely no. And I had to speed through that part because Frank, baby, this is not the hill that you want to die on. Okay. Sometimes we just have to admit that things are out of your control and let it play out the way it's going to play out. You don't have the power that Mr. Kong has. He's an organized crime and he has money. At this point, you just need to be thank thankful to God that he hasn't wiped the entire family out. Okay. You got to thank God that he wasn't like, okay, well you stole this huge sum of money from me. Your whole family's going to get it now. So at this point, just thank God that you had a daughter who was beautiful enough to, to keep this man distracted. Yeah, that's uh, what I have to say. <laughs> what were y'all's thoughts? Uh, it's a wrap, Frank. This is Chan's family now. You need to find enough courage in you to go and formally apologize to your daughter before you get Chan's hands again. You know, but just go ahead and sit down. Ask Chan how he likes his tea. You know, so you could stay ready when he comes around. You know. Just, just, just chill, you know, just get somewhere and sit down. Stay safe. Most deaf. Felicia, what were your thoughts? Praise God. Praise God. Um, praise God. No, mm -hmm. there's not, there's not a chance. Um, there is no hope. He just, uh, he need to give it up at this point. He need I to give don't. it up. Mm -hmm. It's funny how things, how the devil do people. <laughs> He never would have thought it'd be his daughter um, mm -hmm. served up on a platter to this uh, to this man. Served so on a platter, on a platter. So the devil did him dirty. There's Real no dirty. no hope. He's done. It's done. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. The devil did not do him dirty. He did himself dirty. If he didn't do what he did, he would not be in the position that he's in right now. That ain't had nothing to do with the devil. I'm sorry. That was all him. He let the, he let devil, the devil use him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he got influenced <laughs> by the so devil. Like, all right, yeah, it has everything to do. It I was because the, de the devil didn't actually devil. do it. The devil. Oh yeah, Lord. we about to go down that rabbit hole. Um, him? Mr. Oh Lee. yeah, I remember that he's screaming the devil. Like, girl, them kids were scared, but um, yeah. no, the devil didn't he actually the devil make him. Frank do it. He influenced his like, mm, no, you could do this, and Frank was like, you know what, homeboy. You right. It was like, so he let the devil use him to go down that wrong road. And it's like, now that's on you. You have to take responsibility because the devil is always going to be throwing stuff out in the wind because that's what he does. He talks like he's like, do this, 
do that. Blah, 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 blah. He'll, 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 he'll try to guide you. Just like God is somewhere speaking, throwing things out there, trying to guide you. The devil's trying to guide you too. And Frank let him guide him down the wrong street and he got done dirty and that's on him. And that beating, that's all that's, you, baby. That's, that's what I you. mean by the devil doing people dirty. He kind of convinces him them to do it. Now it's their choice, but they make yeah. the choice, and then you know um, and he got sold. He, he, he's dead. gone at the last minute, and they they're they they're there to serve the consequences. You know, like how all people consequences. to get possessed and you know tr jump off a cliff, and then that demon jumps out of them. You know, and they realize. Like, Hi. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like what I do. That's what I mean by the devil mm -hmm. doing folk dirty. He'll convince you to do something and then leave you to suffer the consequence by yourself and laugh. Go to the next person and laugh. He let the devil use him. I uh, watched this man and he was talking about he jumped off of the Golden Gate Bridge. And I think there's only been like a handful of people who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and did not die. A lot of people go up there and they kill themselves. And it's a beautiful bridge, all that beautiful water in San Francisco. So people want to end their lives and they're like, you know, this is just peaceful. This is the way to go. And he said he was determined to end his life. He said he was like, he was up there and he was at peace and he just knew it was time to release and let go. He said, as soon as he jumped, he was like, no, I didn't. He said, as soon as he released and was falling, he instantly regretted his decision. We don't get to hear that from a lot of people who try to commit suicide because they don't live to tell the tale, right? Usually they're very successful in their quest of killing themselves. So when he said that, um, I was like, dang. So what Alicia said was somebody can jump and then that thing jump out of them. Like, bye, I'll see you later. I mean, I helped you get to this point, right? I helped you to see how bad life was. There's not, it nothing worth living for. Just do it. Everything's going to be better. It's going to get quiet, you know? Then... You're, you're halfway through it and you're like, oh, shoot, you know, so <sighs> the devil can help you go down roads that you might not be able to come back from.